Hello everybody and welcome to the Crepesco Lebronis Discuss. Uh, today we want to have a little look on the more darker side of the fandom. Uh, to be more precisely, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, particular stories, like for example, um, uh, yeah, Cupcakes, Rainbow Factory, and the Dot Moth series, and uh, also the influence of sir, this named... Um, uh, subject on the fandom itself. For example, a lot of those Ask Tumblers that were kind of uh, spawned after uh, the success of uh, Cupcakes and so on. Today I w am joined as usually by Biter. Hello Biter. Clark. Oh, and I forgot to make... To, oh. Say what? Say black once again, just for everybody to see your beautiful face. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Okay, this was great. And today, <laughs> for some strange reason, not hidden behind the face of Demon Dog, Scan120. Hello, Scan. How are you doing? Okay. I'm doing fine. Ah, okay. Perfect. And finally, last but not least, not here yet, but hof uh, hopefully uh, he will join us later on. Miss Fortune, who is um, an active um, uh, fiction writer, is, by the way, good friends with the actual author of, I believe, Rainbow Factory, or was it Cupcakes? One of the two. And uh, also working in the film faction sector himself. So we really hope that his Hangout plugin will start working soon and he will be with us. Until then, um, <coughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, have uh, are you two guys uh, familiar with uh, both the fan fictions and the Dot Moth series? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, have you uh, been, come into contact with them uh, early on or just recently for this particular podcast? I guess scan first because guest. I, I knew about them close to the beginning when I joined. The stories and stuff were easy enough that I was able to guess the stories from front to back, but only a few days did I actually uh, listen to, to readings of them to make sure there's no surprise. Well big surprise. There is no surprise. Okay. Mm. Mm, Biter? Mm. Um, yeah, I I, heard, I, I I don't know, I just keep hearing bits and pieces of it and then, uh, so like I would see, uh, like uh, for example Living Tombstone stuff on Rainbow Factory and then eventually I saw both of them on Rainbow Dash Presents. And I think we have Misfortune here. Yes, Finally. we do. And his mic is probably do muted. We? Yeah. Ah. Hello, um, Miss Fortune. Can you guys hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Sorry I'm late. Just uh, had technical difficulties, so I'm Yeah, here not only you. I had to restart my computer around uh, after half, so uh, half past six, so six on my end, so it was... Yeah, professional as always. Corpuscular Baronis Discuss, the best podcast on the internet. Nevertheless, we were just talking about um, uh, how <laughs> we the how, how we already got into contact with Cupcakes, Rainbow Factory, and the Dot Moth series. So you are just in time to give us your uh, uh, connection to the three topics. My connection. Um, okay, basically, I uh, I'm a writer over on ThinFiction.net, kind of an up and coming writer, and. Uh, I also run this re big review group called the Equestrian Critics Society over on thinfiction.net. Um, we haven't really had any affiliation with Cupcakes or Rainbow Factory, but I'm very well aware of the, uh, I guess, the infamy and the influence that it's spread across the writing community. That's kind of the most I could say about it. Um, is that it or you want me to go on? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know where you are in this conversation. Um, I'm just trying to catch up. We we basically just started actually. Yeah, you haven't missed uh, missed too much. So and A and Y, how about you? Uh, yes. How about me? 
I am not really sure how long it is, but I have come into contact with uh, all three um, quite a while back. Uh, I believe... I believe Rainbow Factory was actually the first one I came into contact with because of the um, music on YouTube, uh, the song by who was the one who did it originally. I believe Glaze was it, wasn't it? Or was it Tombstone? Glaze, yeah. Oh, it was Glaze. Yeah, I came into contact with... I, I um, don't think it was Blaze or Tombstone because uh, the one I bought is the Blaze remix. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure Tombstone didn't write Rainbow Factory. Probably could be. No, could I'm be. pretty sure Glaze made the song, and then the song was, or, and then the story was inspired off the song. Hmm. Good sure question. I, I it, it, okay, it was okay. Yeah. It was it was Glaze, not Blaze. Glaze. The yeah. G. Also known as Wooden Toaster, <laughs> but um, at least at the time. And so um, yeah, whatever came first, I myself discovered the song first, and I was like, oh, okay, so there is the story everybody is referencing. So I went over to the story, and when I um, uh, came into contact with the story, I also heard about that there is uh, uh, this other story that started it all, this cupcake story, and so I uh, checked both the stories out, and. Um, Oh, yeah, I, it I was bet that like... wasn't a pleasant experience, was it? Hmm? I uh, bet that wasn't a pleasant experience, was it? It was like, oh, well, what the heck is going on here? Um, I actually have to admit uh, that um, by uh, cupcakes, I actually was kind of fascinated that uh, they kind of, uh, or he, I believe it was one author, uh, kind of managed to do... Um, uh, to kind of portray Pinkie Pie in a way that, uh, yeah, it felt in a strange way natural. So she was still insane and everything, but with her uh, bubbly attitude, like, oh, no, Rainbow Day, you are getting it wrong. I didn't make a joke, something like this. It was like, okay, uh, despite the fact that she is an insane, murderous monster, she kind of reacts like the actual Pinkie Pie would. And... Uh, I thought it was kind of uh, interesting, and yeah, the chat is already mentioning it. Um, I also saw the um, uh, flash videos on YouTube, uh, especially the, the ready to die one. Uh, ready to die. Yeah. I saw. I saw this one was. I thought this one was really funny. So. Um, <laughs> It was. Uh, Germans and their strange humor. Yeah, but nonetheless, um, I guess, yeah, maybe for Sarji, another one of the big ones, and you are out of the chat. Just saying, because I said something about the big pictures. And I want everybody to post uh, evil evil Sarji once, so uh, the picture should be scrolled out of the screen. And, well, <coughs> nevertheless, um, I'm kind of lost like, track of thought. Yeah, uh, a small recap of for the, uh, in ju uh, just in case somebody out there does not really know um, um, the actual plot. Uh, does uh, uh, one of you want to give a short recap of the uh, two stories and I believe a recap of the Dot Moth series, uh, maybe more kind of a description. Why don't we just talk about one of them, like? <laughs> yeah, that would time. be an idea as well. I, so, I can't talk about cupcakes because I never actually read that. I've only read Rainbow Factory. Just a heads up. Okay, fair uh, enough. Cupcake, cupcakes isn't really that complex of a story. Just by hearing what it's about, you could probably write it yourself <laughs> without probably, having yeah, an yeah. actual one. It, it is pretty a simplistic story in itself. Mm. Although I do hear it the only thing that made it the, what are you saying, Scott? The, the reason it stood out, the reason it stood out more than other stories is actually the way he writes. It's less about the story and the way that he does two things. One, he's amazingly descriptive. He describes in such a way that you can see it, and two because he does what every fan writer tries to aspire to. Through the entire story, they don't break character. 
he manages to keep the characters constant the entire time. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very visual story, uh, visceral story actually in a way, um, that it, it does very much cap uh, it, it does captivate its audience, um, even though it, it it's really quite just sort of simple and sadistic in that way. Yeah, pretty much. But as far as the actual plot goes, simple as hell. <laughs> Sometimes simple uh, simple can be effective. That's what I've always said. You don't need some grand, yeah. epic, sweeping story with hundreds of plot points. No. But if oh, that's just yeah. silly, man. But I'm, but I'm saying, I'm saying with a plot like that, uh, you kind of hear the basis of it, and you can pretty much make comments on it without uh, reading it because you already know everything that's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, yeah, it's mostly self-explanatory, and um, I think it... Um, what was the order for that thing being made? It was the fanfic, and then lots of people made videos and whatnot about it? Mm. Uh, they, uh, not necessarily videos about it. It took a few years before the videos of Cupcakes came out, but it did spawn a whole entire alternate universe in Tumblr's and stuff. Uh -huh. As I believe, ab uh, about the chrono uh, chronology... Um uh, Cupcakes was actually written before, for example, Party of One, uh, because uh, it was more based on, yeah. I believe, Pinky's um, behavior in um, what uh, Call of Cutie. Uh, so yeah, it was written in the middle uh, during the middle of uh, season one. So it is pretty old actually, and that's also one of the aspects uh, it became so big. Yeah, it came out. It was one of the first. Yes, we came out at the same time after, as episode fourteen. Uh, I thought it was written after party one. No, nope. it's not been No, it wasn't. It came out around the same time as episode fourteen. Yeah, it is actually associated with party of one and Pinkanina Day and Pie and the Flat Hairs later on, but because the fiction wasn't so popular at this point in time. But it was actually written before party of one. Everybody just draw the connection because the fiction existed, and then you. Saw this episode and everybody was like, "Oh crap! That is exactly like in the fiction. She is psycho. It is true." And yeah, I myself believed in the beginning that it was inspired by Party of One, but uh, no, actually it wasn't. It was a similar angle to take, and yeah. that's also one thing I think you mentioned twice in the sense that the character still felt in characterish for Pinkie Pie, even if obviously that isn't what she is actually in the show. It was. The same character, but with a, a, a certain twist to it. Mm. You've still got her bubbly, happy attitude. She's very much still zany, happy one, uh, as from the show. But instead of the background of always wanting to make others happy and smile, um, this one she is <laughs> more wanting to make her own cupcakes, which is just sort of the... I guess the part of the joke of it is just that that's her core drive has been changed to be something so dark and, uh, mm. compared to what she normally is. Yeah, but her I, eccentricity I would... still works the same way. Mm. Mm? The, uh, her ex uh, eccentricity still works the same way. She is still this kind of uh, out there character who is uh, living in her very own perspective of the world but now it's not about playing uh, collecting strange instruments while the town gets attacked by uh, Paris Brides. now it's about well that it is natural to kill your friends and turn them into cupcakes well she does collect the body parts of, of the others she's taken to her basement but that's not the same as collecting the instruments Collecting the instruments is because you wanted to, um, because you needed to do that musical band thing to speak. Yeah, to no, I know. Uh, actually, yeah, I guess uh, Stormus Century is actually the worst possible uh, um, reference yeah. I could have picked because in this one, she there is actually a reason behind her acting, and everybody is just dismissing her acting as Pinky being uh, Pinky because she usually is this way. Yeah, I guess I could have picked a better one. Not to say anyone would have been better. <laughs> Well, I mean, she's sort of motivated to make food. Yeah, so basically she has a nice idea. Even so, ponies are not uh, carnivores, so it doesn't really make sense. That <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to use the meat, no. no. Which is kind of how it's even more kind of silly and sadistic. <laughs> yep, and feeding uh, meat to all the other 
uh, herbivores uh, living in the same town is kind of wrong. Uh, I think they would, I, I don't know, I've never really studied up on how equines, what happens when they uh, ever consume meat, but it would probably cause some indigestion depending on the amount of meat they eat. Okay, are there any uh, biolo biologists uh, yeah. in the chat who know what happens when you feed an uh, equian meat? Um, until the answer arrives, we... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, I, it's just like I would think. What that, would uh, happen when the equine eats meat? I'm pretty sure they'd spit it out and yeah, um, yeah, never yeah. consider eating it again. Yeah, they, they would probably taste the meat and just. Yeah, I guess that's the problem with the kind of anthropomorphic uh, features yeah. the ponies and MLP have, which makes uh, them uh, yeah probably foolable in this regard. Mm. Um, yeah, so much for, yeah, I guess we can still continue from Cupcakes because it was the point where everything started. I, I believe there was, there had probably been sadistic grimdark fictions before, but yeah, uh, as you guys said, the fact that it was so kind of seeming to be uh, show, showing the characters in character, even so the whole setup was so not MLP. I believe this is the one that made cupcakes stick out from all the other. Um, well, there's also just um, the plain simplicity of it. Mm. That uh, sometimes you could just have mentioned cupcakes, just saying the word cupcakes and then doing like an evil grin afterwards. It's like, and you sort of know what they're referring to. Um, as for, uh, and there's some very um, memorable imagery that lots of people sort of remember from it, like the cutting off of the wings or the cutie mark, um, that stuck in people's minds. Beyond just it being Pinkie Pie acting in character, what people most remember is the cupcakes and the mutilation. Mm. Yeah, the, the detail in which she wrote it. Yeah. Uh. yeah. From what I, told, I, I was told that the quality of the story was uh, some, something left to be desired. Uh, the grammar, it. yeah, but the actual description was pretty brilliant. Visual description, simple story, and memorable twist to the show. Mm. Memorable twist. It really could have uh, benefited from an editor. <laughs> I'm not sure an editor would have wanted to touch that. From what I hear, it was quite graphic. Yeah, pretty much. Well, uh, it's the thing that uh, some people yeah, are actually interested in probably writing, reading, and doing grim dark stuff. There, there is a sort of perverse pleasure that some can enjoy. In, yeah, I'm um, pretty sure that's the same folks who enjoy the good old slasher flick of uh, Friday the 13th and all that fun jazz. Well, that, uh, it's not just... Um, I, I haven't seen much yeah. of the Friday the 13th, but um, it's sort of the, the whole MLP universe is sort of setting up this kind of utopian-ish society, or at least very, it, it, it's visuals and stories and what goes on is very um, sedate and happy and, uh, yeah, it, it's a utopian kind of place. So taking that and putting a twist on it is a bit like the, um, what was it, a dystopian utopia. Oh, you know, one of, the, one of those times where you find out that, it, it, like Mirror's Edge or it, it's a Matrix or something like that, you know, it's always those times when everything is so perfect, it must be wrong. Mm -hmm. or, or there's just there's some corruption underneath it all that you, ha you haven't seen yet. And some people are interested in taking, taking that utopian world and corrupting it in some way. Yeah. I mean, uh, I myself probably uh, count to those kind of people because even so, Cupcakes itself was not so fascinating for me. It was like a, a one-time thing where I was like, oh, what the hell is going on here? But it was, um, I probably am a little bit too, um, oh God, how do you say in English, when um, it, it, it's hard for me to be really shocked by something like this because I am a little bit dumped, numbed down, numb, what, 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 how do you say? Desensitized? Yeah, desensitized, you are, yeah, I guess. Desensitized, yeah. too. I, I'm pretty desensitized, so I wasn't really shocked by it. Um, 
it wasn't as a novel to read. It wasn't so great that I um, was like, oh, this is such an awesome novel. I want to read this every now and again. So this was not the thing. But when I uh, came in contact with the tumblers, uh, with all the Ask tumblers, like uh, Little Miss Rarity, Pinganina, Diane Pie, um, uh, what is the one? Um, Broken, Broken Discord Loyalty. House. Hmm? Discord Hubs. Ooh, Discord host. Oh, I love it. Discord host is great. Um, yeah, but when I came in contact with all those tumblers, uh, I, w I was totally fascinated because uh, of by their dark side. Even so, a lot of those tumblers haven't been very explicit. Uh, I mean, okay, Pinkanina Day and Pi was pretty explicit, but um, a lot of stuff was only hinted at, but... Uh, the atmosphere was there, the twist in the characters was there, and it was a little bit less... Um, it it, it ha was not like a fiction where you actually have to read and stuff. You have you have these images, this dark and gothic and... Uh, well, there's lots, of, there's lots of ideas that the fandom has sort of capitalized on that are basically just sort of a singular concept or idea. So... To do some more normal examples, it would just be, you know, some of the fan-created characters. So you'd have, like, Derpy, her love of muffins. It's just from one scene. It's just the idea that she... You, all we've added is one concept. Right. Or the idea of um, Rainbow Dash and Scoodaloo, you know, uh, just Rainbow Dash putting her wing over Scoodaloo is often the one that people have been going towards. Yeah, yeah. The concept of Lunar Republic versus Lester Empire, however nonsensical that concept may be, loads of people love the argument between the two empires, or whatever you want to call them, I don't care. Um, and, yeah, the others are like Lyra's obsession with humans. Mm. It's just putting a slight twist or idea or concept out there. It, it's a similar kind of creation of fan content, but it's a dark content. Mm. And I believe there is quite a big market for the dark content, uh, considering all the uh, horror movies in existence, uh, um, scary uh, books and stuff like this. So there is a certain fascination to it, especially when you take this uh, happy, happy, colorful world and twist it upside down. Um, Some people just like to see the world burn. <laughs> I, 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 I was so... I was even considering uh, bringing this quote earlier, but uh, I kept it myself, but okay, we got it. <laughs> uh, anarchy. Yeah, there's a perverse pleasure in the destruction of other people's work. Think of like a bully on destroying a sandcastle on mm. the beach. Um, it's a very mean and callous thing to do, but it's, <laughs> I've undone all your precious work. And that's why trolls exist in this world. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not sure, um, maybe you can uh, move on a bit to uh, Rainbow Factory, or has anybody else something particular about cupcakes? Hmm. One thing I could say about Cupcakes is I think that story exploded in popularity just because it was one of the first, mm -hmm. and like a lot of fan fictions out there, they just had really unique timing when they came out, and that's how people ended up kind of finding them, flocking to them, and just being very well aware of them. In the case of Cupcakes, I think it was more of something to point and laugh at, just because I think it was, um, I, I guess the quality, just because I, I hear the quality more than the actual story, and then when I do hear bits of the story, um, it just kind of sounds like it goes so off the rails with the gore that uh, no wonder it's just kind of referenced. But then again, I haven't read it, and I have no desire to read it. Um, even, though, yeah, it was a even though I have read Rainbow Factory, which is... Actually, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, that's basically all I have to say about Cupcakes. Is mm -hmm. It's just kind of dumb luck how it ended up becoming so popular. Probably. And, it, yeah. it was a light, lightning in the bottle scenario. Um, came in the right place at the right time. F. Probably like MLP itself. Mm. Um, yep. Hmm? I said, yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, yeah. Because because of this lightning event, it created, it spawned so so much. First, it was there. Then it had the right timing. And because it was the right timing, when this whole Tumblr cult uh, started, the people just leached on this and. 
uh, because they all got this one story in common, they all knew because Cupcakes was just out there and everybody knew it, so everybody uh, uh, was like, oh, uh, first it inspired me and then I want to create this Ask Tumblr and help, it's in the Cupcake universe, because why not, because Pink Anima and stuff. And yeah, I guess this is how the rock came into rolling, no. Uh, I would say, yeah, it, it didn't just go bang into everyone knew about it. It was that everyone wanted to share it because of how visceral its descriptions were. Mm. Just, it was the supreme, I'm not sure, it, it was at least a big, huge culture jolt. Just like, um, you know, everyone's just, it's only just starting up the fandom, blah, 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 and then suddenly, boom, incredibly gory thick. Mm. And everyone's just like, hey guys, have you seen this really incredibly gory thing about, you know, cupcakes? And everyone's like, cupcakes? What's that? You know, and it's just like, cupcakes just sound such an innocuously innocent Curiosity thing. killed the cat. Yeah. And, yeah. and it start, uh, even the story starts out completely nice. It's just like, oh, Rainbow Dash flying around. Oh, I have to meet Pinkie Pie. Oh, well, hmm, helping her make cupcakes. And then... In the, uh, it is, she gets a cupcake to, for those who don't know, she gets a cupcake from Pinkie Pie, it's still within the very beginning, but the beginning self is very colorful, just Rainbow Dash flying around, nothing seems wrong at all, and then she gets a cupcake to taste, eats it, and Pinkie says something strange like, and now you go to sleep, and she's like, what? Bum! And this is the moment when everybody, when you know, oh fuck, I picked something strange up and something is going horribly wrong because until then it's just a story called Cupcakes. Okay, we have this um, uh, little uh, um, disclaimer at the very beginning which is like, please reader be aware that this story might, uh, what, what, uh, what does it go like, might destroy your admiration for a certain character and a certain baked good. Something like this is the opening I believe. But besides this, it starts out completely harmless until the very point when every, uh, everything just switches. So, and I believe Brony Curious even mentions that Cupcakes was the uh, thing that brought him into the fandom as well. Because he, um, he knew the existence of MLP thanks to his uh, smaller uh, sister, or, and, but he was never really into it. But then at some point he got Cupcakes, he read it, and he was like, Oh crap, what is this? Now I have to know what is this, what's really standing behind it. And then he uh, started watching MLP to kind of um, um, get, get a catharsis to get this whole cupcake thing out of the system. And yeah, then he got hooked. So this just I thought the story. he kept saying that it was, uh, that it was, uh, his scene about the fighting is magic, and also that one uh, video on Rainbow Dash is a uh, sonic rain boom to some music or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've heard this as well. He is kind of in, uh, in cons uh, inconsistent about what actually was the one thing. I believe it, it, it might just be his memory. Yeah, and his, and his ability and what he's saying, like it might be that he saw those two things at, at the very beginning. Mm. But the thing, you know, you, you sometimes see things, but it doesn't actually draw you into the fandom. It's only after you he might have read Cupcakes and then jumped into the fandom. I yeah, don't know. probably. Yeah, I guess he read Cupcakes and went to YouTube to check out what's really behind it. Then he saw the video, and the video with the rain, uh, Sonic Rainbow was the one that got him like, whoa, that's actually awesome. Yeah, uh, if we could go for a segue, I'd say, um, uh, interestingly, uh, one of my, uh, my, my mate who lived over here with me, like, he didn't know I was into MLP, but the, the one thing he, that he saw first from the fandom was the Dot Move series. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he, he saw one time I had some, like, polies on my computer or something, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, do you know about them? He's like, well, I, I, I did see this thing, it was called Dot Mob. <laughs> I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> is that all you've seen? Yep. <laughs> Welcome right, to the fandom. Sit down. I'm showing you the actual show. <laughs> Welcome to the herd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> For some weird reason, actually, um, yeah, I, I, he's now part of the Brody fandom, but uh, he, he, he he insisted that when showing it to his girlfriend, um, that he that she start the same way as he did with the Dot Morph series. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, each to their own, each to their own. Kind of, yes. Yeah, still, still, yeah, that was actually interesting since I showed him MLP and he showed me the Dog Mob series because I hadn't seen it before. Hmm. I bet that was a very fun ride, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I've seen I've seen all of Hot Dickety Demon stuff before, but I I zoned out uh, um, halfway through Wacky Game Shows for kids because it was sort of the same. That was my favorite. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I just sort of found though it was Mickey the Dick being a dick over and over and over again. Did you at least see his uh, uh game review video? Um, where he did uh, he review the book? Video, video game. Yeah, he reviewed the book, The Lord of the Fly. <laughs> yeah, and he, he said that how you didn't have to plug it in and didn't need a console to run it. <laughs> yeah, it, I thought that one was great. I, I think, yeah, um, I, I, I do actually, though, uh, of Hot Diggity Demon stuff, I do actually quite like the Dot Mob series. Um, though it does something different from Cupcakes in the sense it's not just taking the same character and putting a slight twist on it. Uh, you know, or a, a dark back current. With Hot Dignity Demon, he's just sort of taking their most basic figure, just absolutely twisting it to all craziness. He he's hyping it up to its highest level it can go. Yeah, like taking well, Pinkie Pie, who is into parties, and turning her into a party slot. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Twilight obsessed with her things to ridiculous levels and portrayed in the negative way for doing so. This is my favorite kind of magic. Science! And Applejack's the same as always. <laughs> Rainbow Dash, Dream Jock. Uh, no, Applejack's a glutton. No, uh, she's just obsessed with apples. <laughs> yeah, completely obsessed. Yeah. Oh boy. I'd say that's appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Pony really likes her apples. Hmm. So, uh, of all the hot dogs... There, games, I ate all the apples in the orchard. How you like them apples? <laughs> um, the thing is, um, with the Dot Mov, um, it's, it's the same always as Hot Diggity Demon, incredibly dark humor. That's what he's always loved to do. And uh, I, 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 quite, I think it's been some of his best work. Um, it's not as um, great as the, the first Jerry one he made ages ago. But... The, I do like the yeah, continuous yeah, yeah. story. I mean, okay, it, it, it's a, it, the whole thing is a bit silly, but it does actually have a continuity to it. Mm. So, Very what, strange, inappropriate continuity to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 in a sense... It's also, totally appropriate, because it's grimdark. <laughs> it has an interesting escalation. You start with just... Applejack eating apples and going a bit crazy in that first one. And then you have what the... Um, I believe for Eric was second. Yeah, and you have like, second. you have the Discord, and then you have Rainbow Dash 5000. Well, you know, you get Rainbow Dash last and half, then kill, Rainbow Dash 5000. Squash, kill, destroy, swag. Crush, <laughs> kill, destroy, swag. Kill. That's right. Swag. <laughs> and then the 50 million remixes that came afterwards. Yeah, and not being yep. that good. Yeah. Mm. Like they just put Crush Kill Destroy Swag on like a, a loop throughout the whole song, so it gets really repetitive. And it's actually more annoying than uh, Racist Barn One, Two, Three, Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the thing is, at least with uh, the Dot Move series that I kind of liked was at least, uh, yeah, it's the same old dark, dark humor of Max Gilliard as always. For me, sometimes it's just really twisted and gooey and bleh, uh, and sometimes that's kind of nice, but I, I think he does create some really memorable stuff in, his, in those stories. So like, yeah, Rainbow Dash 5000 with Crush Kill Destroy Swag, or the Derpy Toaster. Or, you know, the uh, Rainbow Dash. Ha, ha, ha. Stay out of my shed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so many people love that one. Good one. No one's <laughs> going to no no one's gonna forget that. Uh, stay out of my shed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and You're in my shed. 
Take it away, Well, I'll tell you all about stirring my shit. Take it away, guys. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first ones, of course, was just Max and his own, but, um, I, I did, well, was it? I'm not sure. I can't remember the credits now, but uh, I remember looking at the credits for the last one. It's got, it's got quite a few people working on it for voice acting, animation, and um, other bits and pieces here and there. Mm. So it's, it's actually quite a, yeah, uh, yeah. a group project. What are you saying, Scan? Yeah, it was. Mm. No, I was agreeing. <laughs> uh, what would you say about the last one, Biter? Hmm. Rainbow Factory? No, the, the uh, um, uh, dot swag, swag dot moth. Swag. Uh, because with I all, I, I would say with all it, its epicness, it was, it has a very, had a very different feel to it from uh, all the earlier dot moths. The other ones were all introducing, just like going to a new setting randomly and just introducing a new cool thing. Whereas the last one is really like wrapping it all up. So like, it wasn't like we got a whole, ep you know, it wasn't like the Pinkie Pie episode where we just sort of see what goes on with Pinkie Pie or the Rarity one, which, yeah, before he was going through each character, giving them a huge twist and then having like a Rainbow Dash cut in half or the robot being introduced. This one though, it was sort of them trying to find the solution, having some timey-wimey plot, and lots of fighting and stuff. Mm. And um, there, there's yeah. also a thematic link, of course, like with cupcakes, I'm guessing, like, uh, in the sense, one, making objects out of um, ponies, like, derpy thing, and, of course, the obvious one, like, ripping off the wings in swag. Yeah. Hmm. So he might have been probably inspired by the concepts of cupcakes and wanted to do his own perverse twist on them. There's a bit so, of a twisting coming out of you, Blacker. Hmm? Okay. I, I said there's a lot of twisting coming out. Yeah, I'm fiddling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm spitballing here. Okay. Uh, I was going to say also though that... Um, of all the characters, but he, 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 Max always does like having his light-hearted moments, and those are usually like with Spike. And given Spike's portrayal in season three, I would actually say I kind of prefer the Mob series portrayal of Spike. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, that guy's also awesome. Thomas Spike is best Spike. You know, you could just <laughs> say anybody, not any pony. Just saying. Well, screw <laughs> that. We're all bronies here. Uh, I'll use anybody because I, I want to use that so when everyone says who's your who's uh, who's best character I say our wishes mm. <laughs> if, if you say best pony then I'm confused because our wishes is not pony no, anyway not. yeah um, everybody is a little bit pony so I guess it's fine yeah we got yeah. another one to talk about rainbow factory I um, probably yeah. guess yep. This one's popularity is really uh, has a lot to do with the uh, um, uh, what is it uh, with the music, I guess. With the song, yeah, it's uh, based off the song, mm. which I, I, uh, it's like the complete it's the complete opposite of Cupcakes. Cupcakes was so memorable because of how it was written, but not so much the story. Meanwhile, Rainbow Factory, it's all about the story. The writing in it really isn't all that impressive in any which way. It was a lot more impressive than most fix at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, it was... Nothing stood out. But... Yeah. Well, in terms of writing, I think it was just sort of the idea of the Rainbow Factory and the, the whole of Cloud's Tale being perverted in that way was interesting. Again, again like... I think it, they could have done a much better job with it if they just stuck with completely with OCs because the way they inserted the actual characters it just fell flat for me and took me out of the story and made me disinterested but if instead they just used OCs and tried to build up like a background thing going on Equestria I probably would have made it partly headcanon uh, it might have been interesting as an actual thing going off in the background. I think there is alternative reality, isn't it, though? 
Mm. So, but it, it had to be as soon as they introduced the main characters. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. should give uh, a small summary of um, the story as well for those who haven't read it. Uh, I don't know, uh, Miss Fortune, do you want to go? Yeah, I could probably do that. Um, Rainbow Factory is basically a bit of an alternate universe take on uh, what the Rainbow Factory is or the Weather Factory. Apparently, um, in order to produce rainbows, you have to, uh, well, repurpose the bad flying pegasi that can't handle weather duties um, and basically dispose of them in this, uh, the, the Rainbow Factory. And how they actually make rainbows is uh, basically take these fillies and throw them into a machine since they're basically useless. And the machine, you know, turns them into colors which they use for the rainbows. Yeah, the machine um, turns their cuteness, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> into rainbows. But that's a very shallow way to explain it. Um, see, I actually found draw to it um, because it, it, was, it had a very thick kind of atmosphere to it that... Um, a lot of other picks I've read just don't really get, um, and uh, I, I just thought it was kind of an interesting mystery. I mean, sure, you can kind of predict what the end was going to be, but it, it still felt like a bit of a thing you kind of had to unravel gradually as you went along, and I just thought that was what added a little intrigue to it. It's kind of like a cancel of winning in the sense... Um, something seems off, but you're thrown into a scenario that you don't fully understand. So you're not sure what is off, or where it's off, or why is it off. And that's part of the mystery. Mm -hmm. But Rainbow Factor basically centers around a, I don't want to say Rainbow Dash, but mostly Scootaloo. And basically, Scootaloo was doing a flight test. She failed. She got sent to the Rainbow Factory. Um, and if you're not working at the Rainbow Factory, you're basically used into and repurposed into being turned into a rainbow. So, uh, Scootaloo fails the test. She basically gets imprisoned, and she's up on the chopping block to get thrown into this mysterious machine. We had no idea does what, because up up until a certain point, you just see these fillies and cults disappear behind this machine, you don't know where they go or what happens, you just know color comes from this tube that apparently leads off toward the Rainbow Factory somewhere. Um, but it's kind of a, a very dark sort of, I, I can't exactly say survival escape oriented story because it, it's kind of a very light way to put it, but um, yeah, obviously it doesn't end well, so I guess that's one reason some people don't really like it. Um, but like I said, I thought it was interesting just because it, it was a different change of pace. And it it actually built on its world a little bit. I mean, it could have just, you know, it, it probably could have just been, I guess, what Cupcakes was. But um, no, it wasn't that. It actually tried to give it some foundation and uh, basically explode this whole Rainbow Factory, Weather Factory stuff into its own thing. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, on your regards to the ending, have you seen Rainbow Dash Presents the Tale of a Biker Gorilla? No, I have not. Mm. Oh, they, they, um, as always with Rainbow Dash Presents, they take the story and put their own little twist or production stuff on it, and they, they totally changed the, um, ending. And it's like, they had a song, they had the Phillies all sort of figure it out, and, uh, what they had was, like, a... They, they wanted to take with the, I can't remember the name now, the, the OC and put it into the machine, not Scootaloo, and it was like, um, they said, hold, hold this picture uh, of your parents and, some, and this box of crayons. And they said, we found out we, we get more juice when you have uh, your picture of your family and crayons. <laughs> and, 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 the, and the OC says, oh, wait, what happens if you throw just the, the picture of the parents and the crayons in? <laughs> and they throw it in, and it still produces rainbows. And they're like, "Huh, I guess we just needed to feed it." <laughs> and we killed all <laughs> the fillies for no reason at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all we had to do was feed um. it anything adorable, and it would produce <laughs> rainbows. And they're like, "Oh God, yeah. we've just been killing hundreds and hundreds of fillies." <laughs> <laughs> when all we needed was pictures of their parents. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love that um, that twist. 
<laughs> and I think it was also, yeah. um, wasn't it Tombstone, they made a song afterwards, like, Awoken, which was about no, that. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 that's, no, no, um, that's Hate Seed. Hate Seed. That's Hate, hate Seed and, and, that. and Wooden Toaster, and that was Wooden a Toaster collaborative has. thing, that was a uh, spiritual successor to Rainbow Factory. Yeah. 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 And one of my favorite songs from the fandom. Yeah, well, that song got actually old pretty quick. That's just my opinion. Yeah, it was all right. It was sort of more just um, uh, it being by those people about this story. It's got that kind of sense of pathos following for it. And, yeah, it was just about the um, the singer's guilt about um, his job at the Rainbow Factory. And I, I thought it was always just a funny twist that uh, if, you know, it was... Um, Rainbow Dash presents one. It was that guilt that in all in all that time they should have just put pair of pictures of their parents into the machine. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, but at least this is actually uh, this kind of like oh, and when you give the filly the crayons and the picture of a family, it works even better. Is the reference to the part in the original story where they are like um, there is a uh, additional um, construct uh, construction on the machine that breaks the filly's uh, ribs before uh, because they say that hey we fi found out of, uh, in the past that uh, breaking the ribs makes it even more youth uh, useful so um, they kind of took this element of the rainbow factory and yeah <laughs> turned it around uh, yeah I, I just think I way prefer the ending of well yeah, Rainbow Dash presents at least it goes with their tone because yeah, their course. tone is always really silly and funny Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, they did a really nice job where there with Captain Hook, the, guy, the biker gorilla, I believe, was a complete name. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah well, but, I'm, I'm still fascinated with just um, how much work Aurora Dawn put into it because, um, like I said, it was based on a song, but just uh, I just like how much he actually built off of that. Um. And he was able to create a moody atmosphere. That's something that a lot of writers haven't accomplished back in the early days of fanfics. Mm. And at least it wasn't a mindless slasher that everyone who has read the story has turned it into. Much to my annoyance. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate yeah. that how I appreciate a good Stephen King story where it's just the build-up and just the tension. And it's just not mindless gore like you'd see in... Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street or uh, Halloween or whatever. It, it's sometimes the um, the thing that we remember that uh, sometimes captivates us is the stuff that goes on. But it's also very important, the atmosphere that you create around it, and we often forget that. Uh, so all the, a lot of times when I hear about people writing their own fix or whatnot, they're, they're incredibly focused on just, you know, what's going on with Blue and the Celestia and the grand politics of Equestria. And it's just like, okay, yeah, yeah, you've got this, you know, this fantastic setting and Luna and Celestia are doing this and that. What's the story? From what perspective is it? You know, and they're just spending so much time thinking about what's going on rather than how to present it. Well, awkward yeah. silence. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it's, it's sometimes the problem that, okay, the... I've never really been that liking of, uh, you know, sometimes the, the concepts of like New Lunar Republic Celestial Empire or putting in your own special changeling character or alicorns all sound really neat concepts to a fanfic writer when they sit down and they think, oh, that would be really Let's awesome. Let's make it as cool as possible. Yeah, the only thing is that they haven't considered how those elements could work in a story. And in the end, it just sort of turns out to be long ramblings about how awesome what they're doing is awesome. Oh, don't, Spider, don't get me started on this one story I had to review for my group. It was basically every single character was a generic stereotype who didn't, who were completely oblivious to things going on, um, even the main characters. It was full of human characters that kept shape-shifting and the alicorny or super powerful unicorny crap, and they keep acting like these ultimate badasses and it was just trying to be cool for the sake of being cool, but it it was more, or it was actually far less mature than uh, than most high school students you'd see. It, it was something you'd see straight out of high school uh, 
Shut up, cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> like jocks. It, it is basically a jock story. And a lot of fanfics are reduced to that, unfortunately, because it's like they're on a one-trick mind to make a just this really silly plot to try and throw as many cool things as you can into it. Rainbow Factory did not do that, and that's why I appreciate it a lot in this fandom. Yeah, these are like the two biggest... I think the cat has a point to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, the, the cat's opinion is invalid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> this is like we should have a special cat cast and have you in theory on at some point. <laughs> I, I was saying it's interesting to say uh, those are the, the two fics I've heard the most about of of all the fanfic writeriness out there, <laughs> and they're. Two really simple fix, just in the sense that it's just one making of cupcakes and two the, the Rainbow Factory itself. Mm -hmm. And they're both grimdark. <laughs> yeah, but I believe the thing is that um, those are more popular than uh, other actual good, uh, actual good fan fictions like uh, the epicness of I don't know Fallout Equestria or the Life and Times of Winning Pony. For everybody who hasn't heard this phrase often already often enough on my channel um, yeah I believe the thing is why those uh, particular two are um, getting around so much is because they are f short for one and they have this shock value like um, yeah I, I, is I that guess one, hmm? is that one you showed to your friends just like hey have you read cupcakes yeah exactly oh, exactly that, that sounds like a perfectly innocent story what's it about that, that sounds like that. something one more. Th that sounds like the same thing you do. The chat, and there's actually one more fanfic you have to add to the Every Apple Massacre. Yeah, that's the My Little Dashie. My Little. So those three fanfics are actually Ooh. the ones you always hear about. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, but my, my, my little Dashie is uh, also one extreme story. I guess that's it. It's also a not too long one. I believe how, I how long really is the reading? That's an one and a half uh, hours, I believe. Yeah, it's 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 extreme, not in the sense of gore, but in the sense of being over the top emotional. I mean, the story is not really good, but it is um, it is writ it's written touching. it is just written in the way to make you tear up as hell. Not because it's, it's good, but hmm? it's very touching. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, but it's uh, written this way intention uh, intentionally, just to really put push every single button that uh, uh, gets you uh, on an emotional level. Feels you full of feels. Yes, yes, yes. Feel, but but this is it. Feels like yeah. this is um, I don't know. Spoiler. It will it will punch the sad into you. Yeah, they <laughs> really they, uh, they specifically. The, the writer specifically keeps his character generic enough that you can always put yourself in yeah. person's shoes. Yeah, yeah. So the, the main... The so that you see yourself in that situation. I wouldn't say generic. I'd say vague is a more yeah. appropriate term. Because generic would be talking about every other yeah, character in, in almost every other fanfic, okay? Yeah, he's totally bland, so... Yet you could, like Gordon Freeman, you can project yourself into him because he never talks, or in this case, because he is—he's always just describing his surroundings. He's never talking about himself. I mean, you don't even know what he is doing for a living. So um, you really—he's it, 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 really just a blank slate, and you can easily project yourself in there, and then you experience this very, yeah, touchy emotional story with. Um, the one scene, there was a, a big argument between uh, him and Dashi, and then they meet again in the rain, in the forest, below a tree, and both are crying, and Dash is calling him uh, daddy for the first so time. And, so effective. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it is like, for everybody who hasn't seen it, I really, honestly recommend, check out, um, what is it, Jake Blake's? Jake Blake's video of uh, him, what, uh, watching or listening to uh, Mike the Microphone's uh, dramatic reading of 
My Little Dashy with the very, very sad uh, Dead Island 2 soundtrack in the background, which really makes it even worse. And <laughs> for those of you who I don't... I remember you showed me that. Yes. For those, and it, it is only 10 minutes long. It's, uh, I will put it in the link when I stopped talking because I'm monotasking and I can't talk and search for something at the same time. But it's basically a, a time skip. It's only 10 minutes long instead of the one and a half hours of the actual dramatic uh, of the actual dramatic reading micro microphone did. And for those of you who don't know who is Jake Blake, uh, Jake's Jake's Blake. He is this really uh, pumped up, uh, overly cool black dude who is um, he is into bodybuilding and he is manliness and everything. And then he sits down like, "Yo, man!" And uh, I want I am re I'm watching this video now. And he's sitting there having his um, time skip. And uh, you see him in the beginning. He's just sitting there. Mm. Then you see him like. Oh man, and then uh, the, 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 the time skip stops and he's like, Oh man, this music is really not good. It's, it, it's, so, it's making it really... <laughs> and, then it con and then it continues, and again, and again. And then we reach this particular scene when Dash calls him daddy and he's just like... <laughs> he's reaching for a towel and just uh, blowing into the towel and just crying, starting to hug his own <laughs> knee because he's so touched and... Oh, it's it's amazing to watch, and uh, the crazy part is when you watch this um, this particular video with the uh, music and everything. I cry like a baby myself every time I watch it because it is just so emotional, and it just puts the fun and. Um, it beats the crap out of you with the sad. Yes, yes, it's not good. It's just sad for the hell uh, heck of it, and uh, yeah. If, if if people like that, he he did a good job, but I don't think he held a, a candle, short shirts and oceans, the background pony. Mm, I haven't maybe. actually read that. I've only read his Into Ponies. That's for another day, though. Yeah. But the background pony, that got me far closer to crying than I've ever been. Hmm. Mm. But um, I think we're kind of talking about how... Now these three fix have kind of gotten their names so quickly. Um, I, I think in terms of talking about their influence, um, just kind of how they become so widespread and why everybody knows about them. Um, like I said, it, it just kind of came with interesting timing. But I think the second factor is um, they showed there was more in the toolbox to do with fanfix than people originally think. Because a lot of people think, oh, let's try and keep it within the realm of the show. But then you got fix like um, Fallout Equestria, End of Ponies, Rainbow Factory, um, I guess Cupcakes to some degree. Um, I don't want to say past sins, but I guess that was a little out of the box. It was out of the rhombus, just kind of how we kept the concept of that. But, um, yeah, I think just because they came in at a good time, like in the early days of the, the uh, fandom, when there weren't that many writers and they weren't being very original, these guys come along, they come up with their own unique concepts. Uh, Rainbow Factor's world building, we have My Little Dashie's um, feels, I, I guess, is the defining trait of that. Cupcakes' nonsensical slash because hey, why not? Um, that's how they got so big and influential. Um, and I guess people have just been trying to replicate that in their own way, but haven't been able to do so because, you know, we're, we're late into the fandom. There's 50 million fanfics later, and, um, you know, it just kind of can't be done. So, and a lot of people are just trying to... A lot of people I, want to um, just um, em emulate it, certainly. Um, there might be some who are actually better. It's just, though, there's so much um, mediocre out there. It's quite a lot to swim through. Probably. Oh, yes. I've, I've read some yeah. mediocre stuff. I've read this one particularly bad version of Awoken. Uh, uh, the stuff you read when you're, a, when you're a volunteer critic and people submit 50 million stories to you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, after my first review of fin, uh, fan fiction, I also got the first uh, suggestions uh, by, oh, this was a very good video. Want to read mine? 
Sure, I don't already have a <laughs> 20 books long read later list on film fiction. <laughs> and what am I, I doing? I find, <laughs> I find it kind of pretentious and stuff of people saying, hey, mine's good, read it. Although I've written some, whenever I suggest fanfics, it's always other people's fanfics. I always go, you should check out this one, this one, this one. I never bring up mine or anything like it. I find it kind of like too, I don't know. Uh, there's a degree prideful. of self... I don't um, know. Mm. I think so, there's a degree of self-promotion, which I, I don't mind. It's... Um, and when you're self-promoting, you have to. It's preferable if you you describe it in a positive light. <laughs> Go read my fanfic because it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was mentioning <laughs> he was mentioning that it uh, has already been featured on the Questia Daily, so you will never know. Yeah, because apparently that that's the seal of approval that it's a good story. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, because uh, um, apparently selection? because they. Uh, the, Throughout this one person's story that uh, I know, and they now have, like, it's, I think, over 2,000 likes now. And Equestria wouldn't touch it. They're like, meh. Yeah, but the thing is, yeah, you really have well to done. consider that the um, selection process uh, of everything on Equestria Daily is... 100% flawless. I mean, um, <laughs> uh, Biter knows, Biter knows uh, where I'm going. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, I, I, I really funny, should have Mark. kept a shortcut of this particular one. Because there was a particular day, a very great day for MLP reviewers on uh, uh, YouTube. A day when we managed, uh, the three of us were Digi, um, Bronicus and me, we managed to get featured uh, with embedded videos in a big article in the nightly roundup like hey guys season three is over now go f get your pony uh, ponies here and there was a fourth <laughs> video in this particular post um, the first one was uh, my mystery magic and mystery cure the second one was brony curious as I believe um, the wrap up of the whole Luna story arc, a Nightmare Moon story arc, and one of the um, out of the box idea videos of Digi, and a fourth video that had been posted on Equestria Daily in the very same article where I ask my viewers to send my magical mystery cure review to Equestria Daily to get it featured. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Very little off topic, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, whoa, I'm in the nightly roundup. Squall, squall. What? What? <laughs> so, um, the <laughs> first, I guess the, my viewers <laughs> sent in the promotion video and not the, uh, the sum of my reviewers sent in the promotion video, not the actual Magic and Mystery Review review. Thanks, guys, for thinking ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Equestria Daily really just, okay, there's a fourth one, just put it into the blo uh, blog post with all the other ones. <laughs> Seems legit. Not even one, they, they didn't even, they, <laughs> I have no words for this. <laughs> uh, the, the nightly roundups are usually a bit more loose. Yeah. I'm, and um, the thing to note is obviously uh, is they have some weird policy going on with the... Um, reviewers and stuff, whereas Fix, they have their own pre-readers or something, I heard. Mm. Yeah, no. For yeah, they do have their own pre-readers, although they are really a little too overly strict at points. Um, yeah, but I believe, for example, yeah, the, whole, I, I think, um, uh, the whole reason that um, uh, the um, Flim Flam Philosophers uh, Rainbow Dash Presents is not called Rainbow Dash Presents uh, Rainbow Factory, like they usually use the original title, uh, it's called Rainbow Dash uh, uh, presents uh, um, what was it? Captain Hook the Biker Gorilla was because I guess it was they didn't say Equestria Daily because probably they didn't want it to be too uh, uh, offensive but they were like ooh I want to get this uh, featured on a certain page but uh, they uh, don't want it because the name is evil and um, then they just named, gave it a different name. They called it Captain Hook and the Biker Gorilla, and apparently it got featured. I don't know. 
that the reason why it is. Now that you brought up a good point um, about the whole promotion thing, I don't think any of the three stories really got a lot of promotion because I think they just kind of spread by word of mouth. That, that's just kind of how they got so they, widespread. Yeah, they proliferated outside of UQD. Mm -hmm. Generally, more the um, uh, the music and animation side is where I started picking them up. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of well, EQD did, did uh, promote the Mauve series. Oh, yes. This was like when um, uh, Swag.Moth came out within minutes. It was featured on Equestria Daily with a giant front page article like Swag.Moth. It was insane. Everybody go watch it. Yeah, uh, and the now. usual and the usual warnings. <laughs> this was one insane night. I mean, I uh, have uh, uh, Hot Diggity Demon uh, subscribed myself, so uh, I saw I happened to find it pretty quickly, anyways. But then I saw it, and I, I'm not sure. I believe after watching it, which was minutes after it came out, I went to Equestria Daily and was like, "Really? Already?" <laughs> oh well. <sighs> They so yeah, they, sometimes. their nightly roundups are um, a little bit messy. But yeah, about the fictions, I know they have, a, a, I believe, a lot of pre-readers. Uh, pre and uh, for example, the guy Bronny Curious did a podcast with for a short while, uh, because Rescue Brigade is one of the pre-readers of um, uh, Equestria Daily. So they actually do uh, check their stuff. It was just this one particular incident with the video I... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's a matter though that um, they well they have several different processes for different pieces of content, and so whoever's doing the process and whatever the process is is going to result in different results. So sometimes there'll be something coming out, and people just their inbox is spanned full of look at the dot the new dot movers out, and um, you know uh, Seth here or whatever just instantly posts it up. Um, when they're doing a contemplation post of stories, music, blah, 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 um, they might have a certain process and people going through it. So however good uh, the people are saying this music's good or bad will depend on how good those posts are. But for the reviewers, they don't post our stuff. And in the case of that one-off nightly round-off, it was just sort of, oh, we keep getting so much, we'll just copy some of the links people have sent us and put them in there. Mm. Yeah, so but they, maybe they, this is about to change um, because yeah, they it, uh, the people who were responsible for this whole uh, restriction thingy, yeah, they started uh, they started out with posting Digibrony, and uh, okay, you haven't been here in the start theory, Brony, so you can't know it, but I said no to big pictures. So everybody write a stupid comment until the picture is out of the screen. Um, yeah, um, and I, oh my god, <laughs> really, really, oh god, this is like, oh god. <laughs> oh, it's your see. Yeah. This is a very enticing chat, I'm mesmerized by it. <laughs> um... What was I saying about <laughs> what I'm talking about? Uh, you said they posted. Oh yeah, discuss. well, uh, reviewers have better times now, um, mm -hmm. because yeah, first this guy was uh, enjoying Digi very much and started sneaking here into the nightly roundup. Then there was this big event I talked about earlier when a lot of uh, reviewers got fe featured big time, and then there was the uh, um, uh, Cantalot wedding, the epic Cantalot uh, wedding crossover review by um, Q uh, Brony Curious and Anthony C. And uh, this not one, epic, but humorous. Yeah, yeah uh, from the size here, yeah, with all the animation and stuff, it was pretty impressive and something you haven't seen so far. And um, I believe uh, it was uh, it, it got its very own post it's, it, it as well and this was kind of a premiere because until now we just had been uh, sneaked into the nightly roundup but never got no review had ever gotten a whole post before but yeah with this one this was more or less a deal breaker and uh, as far as I know Digi is now in contact with uh, Equestria Daily people like um, it is not nothing fixed yet but uh, maybe 
this could become a more regular thing that Digi is more or less a gatekeeper for this uh, uh, review YouTube stuff and um, uh, he might suggest uh, one or another video in the future as well. So Because Digi is totally the most objective reviewer out there. Should they ask you, Biter? Um, no, because I haven't got the time. <laughs> I guess... N you see, with Digi as a gatekeeper, a lot of stuff gets through. I believe when you turn into the gatekeeper... Well, um, <laughs> if I was the gatekeeper, I would actually be looking for to put up reviews that actually review the show, rather than ones that are just there to entertain. Though, <laughs> really, what uh, Equestria Daily wants to get is just things that can entertain the dumb masses. So, um, I would be going contrary to their objectives. Hmm. So, not you. What the? Oh, we got uh, a clone once again. This happens every now and then. The second guy will disappear soon enough. So, yeah, at least we got the clone uh, hidden behind Scans OC. So, so someone would be better. Would be like Paleo would be better. <laughs> uh. Although he's he's very busy or something. Well, particularly now in his dock anyway. Hmm. What? This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> What's going up with you guys? I have no idea. We just got suddenly disconnected. I you blame and why. A lot of <laughs> and yeah, and why? It's all your fault. We blame you. I blame and why as well. I'm managing this chat. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Stay out of my chat. It, it, <laughs> scan you there? No, we just got two clones, but no actual scan. I was going to say, it's just that Scan's computer can, like, handle one window at a time. <laughs> Much like my Vista laptop, I'm, I was trying to run the channel. I'm back. He's back! Yay! Yay! Yeah. Woo. I think... I think my internet... Took a nosedive. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we can hear you. hear you. Okay. Good. I think something twitched with my internet, and when I brought it back, even though I was talking, nothing was happening. All right. Okay. <laughs> but everything is back to normal now, so I guess it's a perfect moment for wrapping things up. Or have any... Well, I was actually had an, um, and just one thing to... A possible topic was, we have a lot of grim, dark outro show, but there's also a bit of dark in the show, or stuff that directly from the show has inspired some dark stuff in the fandom. The most like obvious example would be like um the, the episodes. Hmm? The oh, yeah. episodes. Yeah, those ones have inspired a lot of dark imagery, so the yeah, the party of one, uh lesson zero, whatnot. Counts a lot wedding I was gonna say, with the change things actually the Crystal winning. Empire with you know with the really dark, dark character that's so dark it's just I don't remember much dark. people being inspired by his wibbly wobbly darky walkiness. <laughs> Uh, but it's dark. Uh, That's the important thing. Well, he's not dark. He's black. There's a difference. <laughs> and I don't mean black. He's not there. He's a he's blackness in terms of. Ooh, it's a piece of blackness. It's blackness is scary because it's un, it's the unknown. It's dark evil shadows is what it is. Yeah, it, it's just black shadows. So man, but I was gonna say the changelings though have got quite a bit of pieces here and there. You know, like. Uh, that all the things after the um, the cancel at wedding is just a dream, and that the correct changing is actually one. I, I've seen several fan animations like that, one by what was it? One by Troy and one by someone else, where um, I think one of them is you know the, it shows the wedding and the cancel at wedding, and then slowly it actually pans across and tw it shows Twilight wakes up inside of one of those cocoons. Mm. <laughs> Have you seen any of this? Hey, no, but um, I have actually seen more or less this theory with all the other villains, like uh, Discord. Uh, Discord. Uh, this, when Discord was first released, he put everybody into uh, a trance state, so everything that happened after his first release was actually a dream. Then, of course, that everything after um, uh, Crystal Empire uh, was just Twilight's dream because she is still in front of the door and still in hypnosis. So. Actually, with the changelings, this idea is uh, the hardest for me to believe. But I heard other dark ideas with the changelings that 
Um, uh, I believe there are fictions out there dealing with the topic that uh, um, changelings are actually um, uh, trans, uh, transmutated ponies. So we have stories about ponies getting transmutated into changelings. We got um, stories of changelings imposing uh, uh, other people who are dead by now. So. Well, I'm still saying that, like, um, the Crystal Imp uh, the um, Council of Wedding did actually have some dark imagery in yeah. the sense, like, um, you know, when uh, the end of the first episode, where, you know, Twilight's crying on the step, and then mm. it's sent to down into the... The, the hellfire, well, the green hellfire, the, yes. Yeah, and then um, the um, Celestia waking up in the pod thing. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. All the, you know, uh, it would be like Caden stuck into that gooey stuff and everyone being uh, attacked. Well, and let's not forget Twilight tried to murder Chrysalis and almost murdered Cadence. Mm. Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she. Uh, I believe there was. What was it? Oh, I believe this was the ending um, of uh, Friendship with Witchcraft, uh, with uh, Skeleton Cadence li uh, still lying uh, in the. Um, Crystal Cave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally twisted that one. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, another twist. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, um, probably the darkest episode in fandom uh, it pr would probably be Sleepless in Ponyville. Ooh. <laughs> and it, it's not it's not the obvious darkness of you know cupcakes. I... Yeah. It's more insidious than that. Because you laugh about a scared little filly. Mm. Yeah, the, the theme of that episode was all about loneliness I, I, and I everyone know, being pretty useless. Pinkie Pie's tea party seems pretty dark. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's just for me, like... Pinkie Pie's uh, tea party seems pretty dark to me. Mm. That was pretty dark, but Sleepless was like 20 minutes of insidious darkness. Yeah. In the sense that lots of people thought it was a nice episode. But it's not. It's morally disgusting. And I think we're getting a little derail again. Mm, I, so guess, just, I guess. I guess. <laughs> it's, it's just interesting. I guess yeah. Biter ranting about season three is reserved for the aftermath, where he is uh, the one. No, I think it's a quota her. that he has to meet. That he has to talk about season three in a very bad light. Well, no, it, uh, I was saying it's a, it was a very good, insidious, dark episode, if, you, <laughs> if it was aiming for that. So, you I are mean, actually saying something good about an episode of I season mean, it's, it's Oh a great, my god, it's that's a, a great, surprise. It's a great litmus test. Like, um, if someone says they were funny, you can sort of realize that, I don't know, they're not totally sadist, but they're the type who would go along with a group think. You do know what I say in my review about this episode. Hmm? You do remember that, what I say about this episode in my review, like ingenious exactly. humor and stuff like this. Yeah, exactly. You go along with the crowd. Simple. Or you're a sadist. It depends. But yeah, it, it has its practical utility in seeing how much you will laugh at the pain at others. <laughs> Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. <laughs> It's German for happiness about the misfortune of others. Oh yeah, this sounds German. Uh, ah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that was just that was just what I was thinking of. Though yeah, the cup, uh, the uh, tea party scene with Pinkie Pie is pretty dark. Um, well, I think even just like uh, I, I love the visuals of when she actually goes depressed. You know, it's, it's all the backdrops yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, just deflates and dark yeah. and spotlight. Hmm. I like how when she, uh, when it comes back, she's still dark even though the lights are on. And have that, that lesson zero. I think uh, at least um, with Party of One, it hit hard with its dark imagery. And it was so yeah. contrasting Party with the one. whole of season one. <laughs> yeah. Part, uh, lesson zero was more like crazy, insane, while Party of One was more dark and just... And crazy and insane. Crazy and insane portrayed in the kind of escalating manner that was slightly humorous in Lesson Zero. But whereas, still crazy and insane. Mm. Yeah, it's the what she's doing is that, but it's portrayed in a very happy light. Whereas Pinkie Pie's um, fall was very much a depression and portrayed in that way. It it's was like a very creepy era. Mm. 
This is a very fascinating post by Theory Roni. It's a I long. I totally agree with this. This is canon. What does he say? Uh, the whole series is actually Twist Stream. She's actually OD'd on candy canes and never got the, her cutie mark, and she's been in a sugar and dose comatose. Her consciousness is still floating about in her mind. She knew the main six, so their adventures are things she conceives would happen. That is totally legit. So, like, um, did she just take a whack to the head and then she started thinking of season three? <laughs> and then they went through Crystal Land! And there was <laughs> shit <those> things! Uh, isn't that how Foster's ended? Hmm? I don't know. Foster's, uh... Home of Foster's... Home like for a man like Foster's friend. ridiculously I heard that show never saw it. I what? heard that they did a finale, and it turned out to be all about the girl, the that she had Asperger's, and she had a snow globe with the home in it, and she imagined everything that happened in the show. Hmm. I wouldn't know. I haven't finished it. Hmm. I wouldn't say it was exactly the same as what would happen in Foster's, in the sense they didn't have twist, wake up, and, and say, wow, that's an imagination. That's quite a twist! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? Have any of you guys, any of you guys seen Big Picture? I can't remember it in full detail. Uh, maybe the chat will remember. Uh, Big Picture, Movie Bob, The Escapist. He did an episode about the... Um, it was about one kid who... They did, they did that twist where it said that it was all the imagination of some kid. But the only thing was that the characters who featured in that show also featured in other shows. So people on the internet went all around the place um, looking for what was all this kid's imagination. I can't remember what it's called. It's, it's some kind I, of dream I, imagination of us. It kind of rings a bell because I'm also watching, uh, watching The Big Picture by Movie Bob. Uh, and this certain idea rings a bell, but I believe I don't know the series itself. So um, I only uh, remember him talking about it, but not really knowing what he is talking about. So... Not really I can't remember you. Yeah, but it, <laughs> we could have some kind of similar inception with like MLP, just like everything that is imagination of Twist. Da -da. And That's Twist funny. had this, ima uh, this sugar-induced uh, sugar imagination of Discord getting free and Discord forcing uh, this um, uh, all the main six into this uh, uh, dream state where they imagined they went to the uh, Cantalot wedding where the changeling actually put them in cocoons where they imagined that uh, the Crystal Empire uh, came back where Twilight sit in front of the door and imagined oh, that she became an Alicorn twin. Whoa. Inception. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you the Leonardo oh. DiCaprio. Oh. Um, there's Three another, layers. There's another chance of. I there's you. another chance of Inception when the Crestio girls come out because that sort of starts in canon. So that's that's still part of Twist's dream. That she go they go to a Crestio girls and oh, hopefully. Did you hear? No. Did you hear? It's not going to be a spin-off series. It's just that's it. It's what you like that bit. <sighs> They're going to put out the movie Equestria Girls, and that's it. They're not ah, putting out a, a TV series or anything. It's just a movie. So it's a spin-off movie instead of a spin-off series. All right. Yes. Oh well, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I will probably. Yeah. I will probably like watch. Dark fix. Whatever happened to that? Hmm. Whatever happened to the topic of grimdark fix? We are talking uh, about Equestria Girls. How much more grimdark can you get? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really it, not any more grimdark than that. Exactly. It, the chance they would do anything grimdark in that movie. Uh, By the way, if, if we are going to talk about grimdark, why have we not covered End of Ponies yet? Because that is grimdark. Which ponies? End of Ponies. Because I don't want spoilers, I'm still trying to get it on, get into that. What is Endo Ponies? I kind of didn't touch it when I heard that it wasn't finished and he was busy with the other story. But now that he's finished and will continue it, I'll probably go into it. Long story short, it is the Stephen King story of fanfics. Um, it, it is big, it is post-apocalyptic, and very, very dark and depressing. And it's written by the same guy who wrote Background Pony. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I know. That's what I was talking about. What both it? How he was writing something else, or... and I was waiting for him to finish. 
what's his name? Uh, explosion and upskirt shots. Short or skirts and explosions. Uh, short. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. So, yeah. but I guess nevertheless, it's a good point in time uh, for switching over to the um, aftermath. Mm. So, uh, a little bit of things since uh, I just moved over to Twitch TV today. Biter still, and the Aftermath is featured by Biter. We are still um, going to feature the Aftermath on the live stream account. But Post I... Link. Hmm? Post the link. Yep, that's what I'm going... I already copied it, I just need to paste it. Um, yeah, so this, the aftermath of the podcast will be over on uh, my live stream account, while I may be doing some editing over here on the um, Twitch account. So, you have the choice, uh, and I will still be in the aftermath, so you can choose where you want to watch, kind of. Just not talking much. It, it doesn't... Uh, I think for those watching, it still doesn't... Not that much. If it's from your end, and why? Won't they still see everything anyway? No, because uh, from my oh, end, the aftermath will be. I will probably um, feature the aftermath oh, right, yeah. in screen. I, uh, I will capture the aftermath itself and put it into the screen, which means the delay will be added. So we have the normal delay of live stream plus the delay of Twitch. So there will be a big delay. And also the editing sounds I will do will be present in my stream, while in your stream the editing sound will not be audible. So um, hmm. yeah. who really wants to listen into the uh, aftermath, I would advise go over to live stream because I will just do editing. It will just be spoilers. It will be me boring. You won't but... be able to see our lovely faces. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Our very lovely mugs. Yeah. And, uh, of course, if you want to communicate with the guys on the Aftermath, you also should be in the other chat, because, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how Biter and I will communicate whom I should invite into the Aftermath, probably through, through Skype. Theory since. Brownie, make it happen. <laughs> Easy enough. Uh, so so Toon, Toon, Critic also asked, uh, Toon Critic also asked me a few days ago, so he has kind of a reserved spot, so... Yes, I guess we are about to end the official uh, Krupevsky Labaronis discuss at this point. The aftermath will continue over here. Shortly. Here, have yes. a chat. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll continue shortly over here. You can also stay here on this channel for me being boring and editing stuff while still being in the aftermath. And I guess thanks Biter, Scan and Misfortune for joining us today. And everybody else, see you soon. Lark. Laters. Later. Later.